Yeah, let me just crack my back. Okay, back's crack. Okay. Well, I crack my beer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to D&D 404. I'm your Panini Tony, and here's the other three meats in my sandwich. Guys, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, starting with the flavorful Jared. Yo, the big baloney up on top. The warlock with the mostest. Armos here, checking in. And I'm Dan, playing Minus Pebble Walker, also the uh, Munster Cheese of the sandwich. Ooh. And I play a Swarm Keeper Ranger. Damn it, you fucking bitch. You took, I was going to be cheese. You were going to be cheese? No way. I was going to be cheese. <laughs> but I am Alec. I play Drell the Ashborn. And I'm going to be just the big old pickle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> one big one. One big pig. All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Welcome to episode 31. Um, just to give a little clarification, because you're definitely going to hear the uh, hear the clarification in the last episode. We had a split an episode into two because it was just jam packed full of content and story progression that we just couldn't keep it all in one four hour session. So we decided to cut it down. You can thank Dan for that. Hey, that's me. And if you're mad, you can you can yell at Dan for that. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. I've got a bone to pick with Dan, so it's all. I knew it. You bastard. So this is episode 31. 31, right? Because on my session <laughs> notes, right. I wrote episode 30, and I exited out, and I wrote 31 above it. Well, I'm glad you knew. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is going to be episode 31. That's right. And uh, hopefully an exciting one, and nobody dies right off the bat. But uh, we'll see how right you guys do. But you know the deal. Before you get into the recap, we got to get into the rundown. And we've been running down for a solid minute, but we got to get into the meat and cheese of this sandwich. The deets. Damn, you can free the pickle. Guys, come hang out on the Discord and the pickle, of course. Um, Come hang out. Come say hi. We're going to make more of an effort to like just chill in there and just, and just hang out. Who knows? You might. By the time you hear this, you probably already started doing that. So, uh. Hi. Do you guys have anything you want to run down real quick? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just follow us on TikTok. Uh, we're going to be, I got some bangers planned. I'm really excited about for TikTok. So go, go check that out. Cause that's bangers. very new content bangers. over on TikTok. And we also have a lot of new unique Patreon only content on the Patreon and got some more coming. So, Look out for word, that. Word, word. And uh, Jared, you got anything you want to run down? Uh, uh, nope. No, I'm good. I think uh, you guys covered pretty much everything. I'm ready to get in this episode. Oh, That's yell fine. at us on Twitter. Yell at us yeah. on Twitter. Just be like, hi. Just say hi. If you say hi, I'm going to say hi back. tell us how crappy our sandwich choices or are. Or don't even, yeah, just can you eat? Just go on Twitter and flame baloney, okay? Because no, no one likes it. I'm about to put a poll up. All right. Uh, Let's go ahead and get into the recap. <clears throat> In our last session, our heroes are face to face with a shadowy foe underneath the Red Guard Guildhouse. After a brawl with ghosts, the group finds out that the heist isn't going as well as, as they hoped it to be. An ambush is waiting for the heroes, and Band of Bars isn't anywhere to be found. Trying to avoid the ambush, the heroes sneak through Treyas' Buke's captain's office and sneak out a window. After wearing a harrowing escape with the blood shards, the group makes it through the upper <clears throat> the group makes it through the upper district and into the knots back into the thieves' forge, where they find Jubes' dead body. After the comrades mourn her death, and the friendly patrons mourn her death, a red rift ripples into view in the center of the tavern. And that is where we're gonna pick up this session. Bard, play that intro, and let's get on with the show, baby. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the world of Humbrea, featuring three first-time adventurers and one very patient DM. This is D&D 404. Guys, guys, I told you I wasn't crazy. Look. <laughs> Minus and Armos noticed a red ripple in the center of the tavern near Drell, a couple of feet off to the side. Drell, you didn't notice it, so we had this perception check. Armos and Minus noticed it on their perception check. You didn't notice the rift forming. What you noticed is that there was something funky going on with your bag full of blood shards. 
and you see this light energy essence of blue and teal coming from the bag and going into the air towards the rift that Armos and Minas are looking at. Armos and Minas, you see this energy going towards the rift. As the energy is coming out of the bag like a steady stream, you notice that a lot of the blood shards are dissolving in place. No. Like, in the bag? Like in what? the bag. The bag. No. The, so, Armos, <laughs> you see the stream going towards the rift as it becomes longer and longer. As it gets longer, it gets a little bit wider, and blood starts to drip onto the floor from its opening. Minish, you recall that this is the exact same rift you saw way back in the town of Gilo. Drell, you're noticing that these shards are just disappearing into thin air as the stream goes in, as the stream of energy flows out of the bag into the rift, and that's how you notice the rift. Mm -hmm. People around you haven't caught on just yet. Seconds feel like minutes in this moment. What's going through your minds at this moment? Um, you mean besides oh fuck? How do I get those blood shards into this book? I wasn't crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. I'm just gonna start walking away, whistling, acting like I don't know what's happening. I, I <laughs> quickly get away from the uh, take like button up his backpack to, to see if it, it stops the so just so you what i wanted to, to let you guys know is that seconds feel like minutes in this moment so this is like your first initial reaction before anything happens oh seconds feel like minutes okay i give an inspirational speech <laughs> <laughs> perfect time does it feel like I, 10 minutes perhaps like, <laughs> I talk really quickly in a short period of time. <laughs> Encouragement. Yeah. Almost. You start to walk over to Drell as you notice a stream going towards the portal. Drell, you notice that the shards are starting to disappear from the bag as the stream flows towards the spot in thin air. And that's where you see the rift menace. You're in shock that you're seeing this rift again and you're you have an idea of what's about to happen. As you guys all start to speak up and act on those initial reactions, just like before minutes, a giant muscly arm comes through the thin rift and it opens it wider as more blood pours onto the floor and snatches the closest person to the portal, bringing him in. And as quick as that person can scream and realize what's going on, he is through. However, this time, the rift does not close when the person is snatched. More blood starts to come out, and then you see two claws, two hands grab either side and start stretching it open. More blood pours out of the rift onto the floor. Stepping out from the rift is this large demon monstrosity. It does not have any flesh. It's raw, dense muscle tissue standing at about nine feet tall, huge nails the size of small swords. It does not have any eyes. It has like a xenomorph type face. The body type of a gorilla has massive hulking arms with smaller legs. And it has a huge maw that stretches out about a good five feet as it opens its mouth, revealing large sharp fangs and more blood drips from its mouth. I need everyone to give me a charisma saving throw of a DC 12. Armos, you don't have to. Oh my, I'm bad at these. Okay, good. I passed it. Oh fuck, I just rolled a nat one. I did not even come close to passing. Minus Drell, as you see this beast revealing itself, this monster like you haven't even heard of in your scariest stories or dreamed of in your worst nightmares you can even see into the portal that it crawled out of behind you it is an ocean of blood as more blood pours onto the floor behind it you are frightened both of you you are scared stiff just so you know when you're frightened you have to do everything in your power to get as far away from this beast and when it's out of view 
is when you can re-roll to see if you're still frightened of this beast. Oh, I have I have brave. I have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Ooh, go ahead and roll with advantage, buddy. I hate my life. <laughs> my charisma is zero and I got an 11. <laughs> A frightened creature has disadvantage uh. on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of fear is within line of sight. The creature cannot willingly move closer to the source of its fear. Then the rules for being frightened. Okay, so I don't have to run away, but I can't move closer. Correct. But you are very scared of this thing, and it is not magical fear. This is fear from the heart. Ugh. Every time it moves, <laughs> because it doesn't have any skin, it's like leaving bloody footprints and handprints. I need everyone to roll me initiative. That is a 16 for Minus. It's an eight for Drill. Eight for me. On round 20, without hesitation, as soon as it walks through, it just starts snatching people left and right. It starts to swing wildly and attacking anything within its path. You see two bodies as it takes two massive swipes as the bodies fly across the tavern of these two poor souls. Go flying over the ta uh, go flying over the tabletops in the tavern, and just are completely their their torsos are completely rendered from its sharp nails. It's gonna move down to initiative sixteen, Minus. I think Minus, right off the bat, especially being frightened, is kind of doing that thing where he can barely speak. He's trying to like shout, like run, run. In his head, he's saying run but he's stiff and walking backwards as he's watching this happen. Uh, I'm gonna use an action to hide behind a table and bonus action mana potion. You're gonna make me a self check with disadvantage. Yeah. So that is a 17. You believe that you are hidden under the table as you uh, cower and try to gather your thoughts to yourself. You drink your mana potion as you shakily put it to your lips and you regain a spell slot. We're going to move the initiative to the beast. The beast then jumps forward, blindly attacking the closest thing to it. It hops over to Burnsfield and makes an attack on him. It takes a swipe, burns field, and a stroke of luck happens to dodge right under it, and then it comes down with a bite. Its maw lands over burns field's head and onto his chest, completely ripping the top part of his body off as burns field falls to the floor. Oh. Torsoless. Jesus. This thing has a very big mouth. Its mouth is as wide, almost as wide as its top part of his body. Uh, the head kind of looks like a xenomorph from the movie Alien. I don't know if you ever no, but I've seen, <laughs> seen Space Alien. But balls is it kind of like the soup thing from Space Balls? It's exactly what the yes. soup thing from Space Balls. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> All right, well, Drell is going to um, kind of do what Minus did, and he's going to run away and hide behind the table, or try to hide right behind the table, right next to Minus. <laughs> Before you make your stealth check with disadvantage, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to uh, role play Drell being scared for me. So, uh, I mean, uh, I, I'm not, you know, scared or anything, but I'm definitely just gonna walk away because uh, I don't really feel like fighting right now. You know, I'm kind of <laughs> tired. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Ormos, you got this right. And then I just scurry to the table. And then when he hides, he sees Menace just wide-eyed, like soulless, staring at the wall. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and make me a stealth action with disadvantage. Mm -hmm. That is a 12. You believe to your knowledge that you are hidden behind this table. As you are crouched behind a table, you try to regain your composure and just hope you're a hope you're praying to the God that you believe in that you are not seen by this monstrosity. Armos, you are not frightened. I am not frightened. You are looking at this beast and Reginald is staring right at it too. Now Reginald, you look over to Reginald and you can see visibly that he looks pissed. He's chattering his teeth and grinding his bunny buck teeth uh, as he is staring at this monster in front of you. You get the sense that this might be on some level what he is. Or maybe knows him in some way, huh? What are you doing uh, on your turn? I'm going to pop a mana potion as a extra action so I can get a spell slot back. <laughs> okay. 
And then first, I'm going to uh, look at the guys running away, and I'm like, I give uh, I give Menace and Drell a nod. It's time! <laughs> <laughs> I cast Fireball. <laughs> Quick DM tip. You don't have to cast Fireball on the target. You can cast it far, far enough away where it's still in blast range. It'll still take full damage yeah. if it fails without yeah. hurting you or your friends. So, I mean, true. But what, what fun is that? No, hang on. Oh, I agree. So there's no one behind the bar, so I'm going to cast the uh, center of it kind of farther back to where there's no one, but uh, hoping that the blast radius gets to him since... The blast radius, which is like 20 feet, which is pretty massive in this small area. All right. So does he combine both of his hands into one ooh. finger gun? <laughs> yeah. He turns, he turns, he does uh, some crazy finger gestures where he brings both his hands together. <laughs> and then what he does is he uh, puts them both flat uh, to where uh, one hand's on top of the other. <laughs> directly out in front of him and he pulls one hand back all the way to his chest and then lets go and all of a sudden a <laughs> flame fires out from his hand and a big ball of fire lands behind the bar. Oh my gosh, Armos Jitsu. <laughs> Just adding a little tidbit to that. As you are summoning this energy for this fireball and taking your pose and about to launch it from your mega finger gun, you see all, you see Reginald on your shoulders, eyes go red as you begin to cast a spell. A swirl of fire illuminates around Reginald and then around your arms as the magic is appearing as a fiery swirl around your body as you launch this fireball from your hands. Hell yeah. This thing needs to make a dexterity saving throw, am I correct? That is correct. So it needs to make a dexterity saving throw of 15. It fails. Roll for damage. Oh, fireball damage on a failed save. That's amazing. Reginald goes as the magic as the magic fire swirls from him and into your body. As you launch this fireball, he goes, light this fucker up. Oh my god, that's so oh <laughs> 29 damage. Oh baby. This fireball ignites behind him as he fails and catches and bursts into flames. Reginald does not blink as this giant wave of magical power surged throughout the tavern, knocking over uh, knocking over plates, glasses, uh, beer bottles shatter, mugs hit the wall, people kind of uh, taking their moment away from the fear from the beast and shield their eyes from the bright burst of flames that are now coming from the beast as the beast catches fire and is screaming in an agonizing pain. And you can see that the, the fire is not sitting well. That damage doubles. Oh. Dang. Interesting. You deal 58 points of damage as this fireball ignites him, and he is wigging out as he's trying to get the flames off him, but he's not sure how to as it was taken by surprise from this move going up to initiative 20 as this beast flails around on fire it just wildly swipes and bites at, at whatever it can get as people start to run away from the beast that you just missed with your fireball they're getting up from the table it takes out three people as this thing just flails as it's trying to put itself out barreling through and he moves about 10 feet forward and the flames finally go out and this thing is breathing heavy its muscle tissue is looking burnt and charred and as if this thing could look any more pissed it does he doesn't look in your general direction rather than the closest thing to it it's going to go to initiative 16 minutes what are you doing well first cracking a beer <clears throat> next <laughs> He had to get some liquid courage. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's for the roll, you know? It's really to help my roll. Oh, go ahead and write me a, uh, another DC saving throw against this Frightened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Menace, I think Menace is staring at the wall, kind of talking to himself, you know? I, I can't do this. I, I can't do this. I, I can't do this. But then at the last second, uh, off of a 17, Sid slaps me. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. 
Oh my gosh, I don't know what came over me, Sid. I'm sorry. No, you're right. Let's do this! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I got one question before I do my turn. Um, if I wanted to help Drell get out of his, would that cost me an action? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll do that, though. I'm going to immediately... Uh, so, I'll bonus action and snaring strike. So, that means uh, on the next time that I hit with a melee weapon attack, um, there's a possibility that the target will be uh, restrained and take damage. And then I run over to Drell and like, Drell, come on, snap out of it! Snap out of it! Uh, I mean, I'm not really scared or anything. I'm just hiding back here. I don't care what you are. Let's get in there. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be my turn as uh, now Drell would do a, just a normal save. So it's going to move down to the beast's turn. It's looking around as it shakes and shakes the flames off its burning charred body now as his muscles begin to tense and react to the damage that it just received. And it's just looking around for the first person it sees. And there's a number of people. One to three, it starts attacking a regular commoner in there. On a four, it's going after Hugh. Oh, shit. Wait, they don't have a turn? Like, they were just fighting with us. You and Baldi, they wouldn't jump in on this action? So, they were feared in this moment. Mm. Uh, yeah, and they're kind of just chilling around jubes. I mean, it makes sense. They weren't really helpful with the shadow guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> given your sense how you worked with them, these were kind of newbies and just kind of stuck to their trade. You don't sense that they're much of fighters at all. Oh, we they noticed. Have their <laughs> <laughs> oh, we noticed. Oh, Tony's getting the camera out for this dice roll. I'm taking out the Die of Doom, a D4, the mascot of our D, D podcast. One to three. This beast attacks a, uh, another patron of the tavern. On four, it attacks Hugh. Every time he rolls <laughs> this, we can't. Really move, just don't touch it. Move the chair. <laughs> move the chair. Dude, untie. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> your, your, your cable on your headset is giving me PTSD. Yeah, I know. I fucking hate my headset. My original one. wireless one. one. Right, lift it up from that point and show us. Oh my no. god, it's four. No, dude, no. It's re -roll it. guys. I You're actually lying. saw him put it down like that. Yeah, he he lied. It went behind his chair. He's lying. I didn't see enough spin. I saw him it. kick it re -roll over. It. We like, didn't see we it. You gotta re-roll it. The beast lunges forward. Fuck, I don't have any reactions. And makes att attacks on Hugh. Hugh looks up at this beast, frightened and scared. It goes to slash at him. Duck. Misses as his halfling height oh. comes in handy. Oh. He goes to bite, slamming his head down. Oh no. I got a natural one as his head butts to oh four, my God. cracking oh. the wood around oh my God. and creates a hole looking when he when the beast moves his head back up as the wood planks fall from his from his head, you can see the room below. Hugh, what are you doing? Get out of there! The cracks of wood spread wide around the hole that it's just created, showing the amount, the immense force and power that this bite had initially. It is now going to move to Drill and Armos' initiative. Go ahead and make a saving throw. Just norm, just, just a straight. Charisma check, DC 12. See, the issue is I don't add anything to Charisma. Fuck, yeah, see, that's a 10. Inspiration die? <laughs> uh... I don't know if it's worth it. No, I'm going to take a, a, a dash action and run into the room um, where our stuff is. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. So yeah. from the table, you get up so quick that the table just like flips over in its spot as you're kind of hiding under it. And you make a dash to the room uh, where you were staying in, where Duncan's friends were staying in. The room is empty. All the equipment was there. Everything you left behind is in that room. You could finish out your action to gather any equipment that you want uh, that you may have left behind. But you don't see anybody. You don't notice anything different. I am going to grab the giant slayer. Uh, okay. So you you take your turn. You get, uh, well, the same mechanically, you get all your equipment back on. You pick up your bag and it has your weapons in it and you're good to go. Uh, the only thing you can't do, uh, if you want to put on your armor, I'll say that takes another full action because you have to suit up because you are wearing heavyish armor, your chainmail. 
Uh, but everything's okay. in a bag well, I mean, and ready to go. I would have got there in a one movement then. So then instead of a dash, I'm just going to move and then use my action to put on the chain mail. I just said dash because I didn't think it was going to Yeah. Matter, no, no, you're good. Then. Yeah, so you dash, you run into the room, and you, as your main action, you start getting your equipment and start putting it on. Yeah. We're going to move to Armos' turn. Armos, this thing launched towards you, which is only a few feet away from you, and this thing is towering over you. It being hunched down, it's still almost touching the ceiling of this secret tavern. Reginald on your shoulder is like a like an angry cat where like its back is hunched up and like it's really gripping on to you and is not having whatever this thing is doing. He looks pissed at it. Um a shout out to Hugh and Baldy. Hugh Baldy, get the fuck out of here. Move away. Get out of here. We'll take care of it. You guys aren't gonna be able to do anything to this. As a kind of precaution to try to distance the monster from Hugh and Baldy, I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast and hit him with both the bolts and try to knock him back. Well, yeah, that is a nat one, but it's plus six, so... <laughs> oh, no. This bolt just, like, goes right by his head. So that was one. So I get to do two different hits, or is it all one hit? Two different hits. Two, one bolt per hit. Sweet. I got a 10. Probably still misses. It misses. Oh, oh but no. he's so big. <laughs> I go all the way to the farthest back table uh, from the monster. I uh, kind of... Can I push it over all in the same turn and, like, kind of use it as cover for my next turn? Is that enough? Uh, or do I, was that, like, an action? That would be to knock anything over would be an action because okay, I'll just you're get, hiding. Get yeah. behind it. That's fine. Yeah. All right. So get behind. Uh, I kind of move as far back as I can. The furthest back table. As you run behind the table, Reginald looks at you. Goes, you're scared of this thing. It doesn't even have any wings. <laughs> as his ears like wiggle, you feel you're feeling a lot of animosity from Reginald right now. Uh, and he feels a little pissed towards you that the fact that you're moving away from this thing. What do you want me to do? I can't go up. Do you see? It just knocks someone in you half. Do you see any wings on this demon? I don't. I don't see any wings yeah, on you either. you get in its face and you tell him what's what. Wait, Reginald, are you saying this one's like a puny version of you? Because he doesn't even have wings? You have like seven, right? <laughs> I'm a greater mighty demon. As you just hear the echoes over the carnage of this thing just <laughs> ripping people apart uh, every second that goes by. It's going to go to initiative one, because now that you yelled at Hugh and Baldy, they're going to uh, react on their fear and start to bolt out, bolt out, and they're going to start running. So Hugh just runs right under the table using his little halfling. This Baldy follows his lead and starts to run to the back corner of the tavern. It's going to move to Minus's turn. Minus, as you're looking at this beast, getting ready to just take your turn, this thing is speaking in demonic voices. You can't understand anything. Almost you cannot understand anything, but it is its tones like revert like reverberate and echo as it speaks. And it's just speaking in a language you cannot understand. Drell runs past me. I'm like, Drell, where are you going? <laughs> I'm all, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sid, I guess it's up to us, huh? Charge! <laughs> Me and my, uh, I use an action to dash uh, using my charger feet, and I'm gonna use a bonus action to hit this demon uh, running in a straight line with a melee attack. Awesome. Oh my God, that's bad. <laughs> that's like a seven. I'm gonna use an inspiration die because <laughs> I don't want to come off of my fear like that, rolling a two. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's a 19. A 19 hit. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, lordy lord. Roll for damage on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the scimitar damage is five plus five is ten because I charged. And my swarm damage is also five. And then it has to make a strength uh, saving throw of a DC 13 or be restrained by vines. And uh, I'm going to use my favorite foe ability as well to mark it and do an extra <laughs> one point of damage <laughs> a roll of two against your restraint as oh. vines start to wrap around it oh, shit when you attack 
you, as you're like aiming for his chest, he grabs your scimitar with his reaction. Oh, okay. As you start to cut his hand, and he wraps his massive demon claw around your blade. As he catches your blade with his reaction, that damage is half. And you're going to make me a contested strength check. And uh, I'm going to roll this. All the damage? Or all the damage. The all the damage. All the damage gets though, half. Damn. So the reaction is what's having the damage. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah, ensnaring yeah. strike makes your attack magical. Because it, if I'm understand it's staring strike correctly it wraps mm -hmm. your weapon with this magic right essentially that's that's so the, what it sounds like so from my understanding of the rules of DD, that makes it a magical attack friend yes so we're gonna roll a contested strength check the goal here is a not lose and b not to lose by more than 10 10 or more and is the cutoff roll 15 okay. Okay. And say if I roll 25, uh, that counts. Right. Even with advantage, I got a freaking set. You rolled a 20. It was plus five. Oh, that hurts. It takes that half hurts. damage. As you attack with your main hand, because um, this is your main action, right? Your bonus action would be your offhand weapon, right? Uh, I mean, it's not an offhand attack. It's just a bonus attack. Right. Okay. So the sword that's in your, the scimitar that's in your main hand is the one he caught where he took half damage from his reaction. As he catches the blade, he rips it from your hand and snaps it. <gasps> no. Your scimitar falls into two pieces onto the floor. <laughs> the demon looks at you, Minus, as it is now entangled in all these vines. It just chucked one of your scimitars out of the way. It is going to make two attacks against you. Of course. Bring mm -hmm. it. Is going to take one with a downward slash. I'm just going to roll both. And another one with a bite. I'm actually, roll the slash. 18. Make a, well, first make a, another strength saving throw now that it's its turn. Strength saving throw. 21. Yeah, it's out. It's okay. out. It breaks free from the vines as it comes down to make a slash. This is its second disadvantage roll. No, this one's not disadvantaged now that it's out. Oh, it rolled the same thing. So an 18. Uh, as this thing comes with a downward slash, dealing eight points of damage as it just slashes down your face onto your shoulder, like the side of your head. Make me a constitution saving throw with DC eight for me. Oh, 17. Nice. You manage to like just get out of the way just so slightly as it's hitting you, as it doesn't hit anything vital. As you go into move, it's going to come at you with a bite. 13. Uh, no, that does not hit. Does not hit. It goes to bite and snap as your hair gets blown back as its mouth shuts right next to you as it misses. Uh, it's going to go ahead and make a movement to try to get behind you as it tries to sidestep. Uh, well, my concentration's broken because my concentration check failed. So no favorite foe anymore. <laughs> oh, nice. Good for my good for my monster. And it's, uh, <laughs> speaking of monsters, it's gonna go down to Armos and Drell's turn. Okay, <laughs> Drell, go so, ahead and make me a fright check. Okay. See if you're still scared. It's a nat fucking twenty. Woo! You feel brave, my friend. Go ahead and take <laughs> your action. Okay. Um. So yeah. Oh, I have the the axe too. Instead. Of, wait. So what is like this? I guess I since I've seen the monster, does it? classify as like a giant monster or no no uh is a large fiend is that okay yeah drell is free you know he's freaking out because he ran like a coward even though you know he <laughs> will tell you he wasn't one um so i'm gonna bonus action go into a rage and as he's fiddling to try to get all of his stuff he kicks over a like a boom box that starts playing a non-copyrighted <laughs> version of Highway to Hell by ACDC. <laughs> and he's going to walk, he's going to grab his axe, he's going to walk out of the room to the sound or the music, and he's going to look at the monster and go, Hey, fuckface, pick on someone your own size. And I'm going to grab one blood shard, and I'm going to break it open in my hand and try to consume it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking what? Uh, he, he just came in like Stone Cold Steve Austin, just like double fist and blood shards. That was the most metal turn I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, 
I'm on the cobblestone to fight. Burn it. <laughs> uh. Highway to hell. No, we can't sing that. Uh. We can't sing that. <laughs> is it non copyright version? Uh, as you. <laughs> Tony's face is. Smash the blood shard. <laughs> he was not ready for this. On your hand. Which one did you do? Uh, just like one of the ones from the backpack, I think. <clears throat> Roll me a, uh, constitution saving throw of a DC 15 for me. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. 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 I have plus six to calm though, so we're okay. Uh, let's plus see. six? What? Uh, that's a nine. Uh, but I am going to use my inspiration <laughs> die because I feel like I might need this here. Oh my God, that's worse. I got an eight. <laughs> oh no. What'd you roll? <laughs> what do you mean? I rolled a three and a two. Oh, man. <laughs> you should see Tony's face right now. <laughs> <laughs> you take seven points of damage oh. as the the loaded blood shard full of life essence gets absorbed into your body. You're just holding your main weapon, right? Uh, The axe, yeah. You grip that as tight as you possibly can. Your eyes go pure white. And then as they go pure white, your iris completely fades. And then instantly becomes bloodshot around the completely white iris. Your hands turn bright red from gripping your weapon. Do Drell's tattoos turn red? Drell, you have tattoos? Yeah, of course you know I have. Oh shit, you do. Your skin starts to turn whiter as your ta tattoos start to become deeper in color. And then I'm just going to make my way towards the uh, the demon. Okay. You start to walk towards him. You feel... So you know how you're raging right now? Mm -hmm. It's doubled. You have never felt such anger in your life. Such animosity. Such rage towards another creature. For the time being, you have to attack him every turn if you're able. And you cannot do anything else. <laughs> I wasn't planning on it. Okay. Minus, as Drell walks out, Armos, you too, you, oh, there is something terribly wrong. Just from his, you notice from his appearance, you notice from his demeanor, and you have seen him rage before, but not like this. Dr Dr Drell? You, you good? We're going to move to Armos's initiative. Uh, before my turn, I just look at the fucking chaos that's going on. Oh, my for real. As I see Drell pounding blood shards, <laughs> turning into a abominable white snowman with weird tattoos, walking towards the beast, I see Menace throwing pebbles at the thing, literally not doing any kind of damage. I see Hugh and Baldi sprinting away after barely <laughs> escaping with their lives, and Burnsfield's in two pieces behind the monster. Oh, one piece, it was swallowed. Oh, he swallowed it. Mm, yeah. Anyways, okay. Collect. I collect myself after all that. So I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast and hit him with the two bolts. The good old bolts. Let's see how they do this time. First one comes out, 21. That hits. Hey, and the damage is 11. And then I'm going to follow up with the second one. It is a 9. That misses. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I knocked him back 10 feet. So do you want to move that monster? Yeah, it goes right over Minus. Minus is small. Luckily enough, he does not get hit from the creature being pushed as it falls into another patron uh, cowardly hiding uh, by the bar. Knocks that patron over uh, as your other bowl also misses and whizzes by. I can eat one of those golden apples, right? You can. Yeah. I think we should do it. Golden yeah. apple gang. Gang, gang. That golden fruit. Roll me a D100 as you bite into this delicious, succulent golden fruit. An eight. You rolled 100. single digits on a D100? Yeah, look. That's fucking crazy. Oh. <gasps> what happened? Oh my god. What? Dan's metagaming and he I'm looked sorry. at see what it I is. Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god. I'm never looking again. What? Armos? Oh! What? <laughs> oh my god. I'm kind of glad you're a tiefling. Oh. Am I on fire? 
because that's awesome. You, as you eat this potion, it erupts and bursts into a massive flame. Can you tell me what Fireball did again? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a manual right there. You look it up, bro. Yeah, Fireball uh, no. is a third level spell centered on yourself. Oh my lord. <laughs> it, it what? It literally does Fireball? On yourself, yeah. Third level. Wow. Yep. That's awesome. It's literally my spell. Yeah, it's literally your spell. But you don't take any fire damage, So it's right? flavored as the, the fruit. As you bite into this delicious golden succulent fruit, you go, mmm, delicious. Boom, nuclear explosion <laughs> just goes <laughs> off. <laughs> you know what? It's very flavorful. Too flavorful. Oh, what is a third level fireball damage like? Uh, a D6. Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It's but, be fine. Uh, but, I'm going to go ahead and roll that damage. Off, right? Hold on. So go ahead I get and give to me... make a dexterity saving throw first. <laughs> that's true. Make no, a dexterity that's... saving throw. I don't think that's how that works. Target takes 8d6 on a fail and half so, on a success. So if he makes a dexterity saving throw and succeeds that throw, then he takes a quarter damage because he's a tiefling and he saved. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not trying to rule shark, but I mean, I don't know how the fuck that works, bro. If you bite into an apple, then you dodge the fireball. Like, what, like how does that? I hear it. As he realizes it's about to explode and ducks and <laughs> takes less damage. That's what it is. His reflexes are so fast. It's he's fucking. A, it's just like a cartoon, like, like cake bomb. It's like he goes to bite into like an apple, but <laughs> it's clearly like a bomb, like string Dude. sticking out of it. I imagine Reginald going, look out and like dive bombs in front of the apple to save you from some of the damage okay. <laughs> but wait what's the dc of an apple so it's, it, it acts like as if you cast it uh off the chart i'm reading it so, so it's gonna be, be 15 it's gonna be 15 so if i roll a 15 oh she so saved thank goodness yeah you save so you okay, take cool. half sweet so it Plus can't half. kill me so that's good well let's see what the damage it is could like. have killed me i just want to point that out uh it's <laughs> 30 damage Oh, half hey. oh. half and twice. Half twice. So you take one fourth damage because you're a tiefling. You take seven points of damage as this fruit explodes. What's the range on Fireball? 20 feet. Oh. I'm so far away from people. Yeah, he's by himself. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, for the people that are listening, we are using rulers right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to point out. So the... The south uh, west corner of the room is completely on fire, and the north east part of this room completely on fire. <laughs> yeah, all the stuff's really happening like in the middle. It even says the fire spreads around corners. It ignites in, uh, flammable objects in the area that aren't being worn or carried. That that was nuts. So. All of, so, to make this chaos of this room even more, Drell comes out looking like a, like a, you know, white ghost. I'm gonna fucking kill him. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, you know what? I bite into an apple and I explode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this fight's going so well. Rachel looks just like, this I'm red peeved, but you did what I do. That's what you make me do when you send me in. <laughs> Okay, so all right, that's my action. Was that your bonus action to eat the fruit? Yeah, it's my bonus action, but I can still move, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, not that I want to, because I'm in the fire, so like, yep. pretty happy with it. You know what? I'm uh, I'm uh, just chill. Uh, we're gonna go down to initiative one, which is Baldy and Hugh and other patrons, as they all start to make a mad dash towards the door. The door is across from Baldi and Hugh. The closest one to the door would be Minus and Armos. Uh, if you look at roll 20, you'll see the circle I put. Patrons, as the uh, fires begin to spread from the from the bar top and now around Armos, the place is getting very smoky and getting a little hard to breathe. You're good for about maybe a few more moments before you're trapped in a burning building, like a fully burning building. As people on turn one start to make a mad dash towards the door. We're now going to move to turn 20. The bees have to get knocked back 10 feet from Armos's Eldritch Blast. 
he sees almost in the distance and starts to make a charge towards him. Towards Armos? Towards Armos. <laughs> Does it like hit me out of the way? Minus, you are in the way. Yeah. So he looks at Armos getting blasted back 10 feet and makes a full charge tackling motion uh, straight Ooh. to him. <laughs> You're going to make me a dex. So you get to choose a dexterity or strength saving throw with DC 12, Minus. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a dexterity saving throw. That sounds legit. Okay. What would you get? Uh, 23. You manage to roll out of the way, moving about five feet to your left or right, as this thing barrels through and is going to attempt to hit Armos. 14. Rude. Rude. <laughs> it hits you. This beast just launches, and from its launch point, you see that the floor cracks beneath him uh, as he just lunges forward and charges like a jack linebacker making his way towards you. Hits you. Go ahead and make me a dexterity or strength saving throw. <laughs> Your two best trades. Ooh, nat 20. What? So, ooh. Yeah. Like you this. managed, as you get hit, this is, uh, that was a reaction of getting hit. As you get hit, you manage to stay standing as this thing barrels over you. You take 12 points of damage. This thing just body checks you. Uh -oh. Is going to make another attack as... As it's hunched over, it's going to look back over you, Armos. And he's going to shoot something from his body as a blood-like spear comes out of his mouth and shoots over Armos and attacks Minus. Me? <laughs> I don't look that scary. Look, Drell looks scarier than me. <laughs> I'm going to fucking kill him. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Ooh, a nine. Ah. You see this look. Its mouth begins to... Like its jaw dislocates for a moment as a huge sphere of like blood and bone shoot out from its mouth and flies right over you. It's gonna go to Armos and Jell's turn. I think it's Menace's turn. It's my right? turn. Yeah, it's Menace. Menace. I just bit into an apple and blew up. Yeah. Drell ate something. Oh, it went, it went, oh I'm sorry. Well, I skipped your turn. Menace. I skipped yeah. the turn. Minutes. So, yeah, Menace, go ahead and your initiative the now. I'm sorry. I skipped over Menace. Uh, say it again. Say it again. Uh, Menace, it is now your initiative. As I skipped over you on accident. Well, you don't have to add <laughs> that, right? Because you just that. add his move before. <laughs> I was just going to cut it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say he's going to cut it. Like. Well, uh, keep with the theme. Minus sees Drell eat a blood shard uh, and go into this crazy rage. Armos eats a fruit, blows himself up. I'm like, oh, well, I guess it's my turn and I eat my golden fruit. <laughs> Roll me a D100 as you bite into this delicious succulent golden fruit. You got it, baby. That's a uh, 30. You teleport 60 feet to an unoccupied space of a choice that you can see. <gasps> oh, it's sick. Can I go like right behind him to get advantage on my attack? Sure. <laughs> All right, my turn, guys. Oh, poof. <laughs> I teleport behind him <laughs> and try and jab my javelin <laughs> into his back. So poof, I teleport behind him and I roll to hit my javelin and that is, oh my God. That's a 15. That's a 15 hit. It's. Oh my God. <laughs> I was sure that was about to miss. So that is six plus seven is well actually plus five so that's 11 points of damage with my javelin hey, so you go ahead and you barely <laughs> hit him with your javelin uh as you make this lucky attack as it like it's trying to like regain its composure from just tackling armos and you like get him off in the back on the side and you do half damage as this weapon is not magical and i'll uh mark it again because <laughs> i still have a favored foe uh, ability and give it uh, another one point of damage. <laughs> sick, sick. I'm gonna just do some quick math here. I would say this thing looks, uh, you can start seeing its wounds as it's bloody, but this thing is leaking blood with every step that it takes, and you don't know whether it's healthy or not. Now it's gonna move to Drell and Almost this time because I actually skipped Minus and went the demon went before him on accident. My bad. So we're just gonna go ahead and go on with their turn. Drell. <laughs> um, so Drell is extremely 
Like, in, he's in the biggest rage of his entire life, obviously. He's gonna pull out his axe. Um, he's gonna, like, kind of put his head down and, like, brace like he's gonna run, kind of like Zenitsu from Demon Slayer. <laughs> and he's gonna whisper, uh, Marmalade, uh, to activate his axe. And he's gonna just sprint for the demon. He kept Marmalade. He's gonna try to take a swing at him. That's a 19. Heyo. 19 hits, my yeah. guy. <laughs> For damage. Um, and that's gonna be twelve damage. Ooh. Well, I guess I guess the activation. What does it do? Uh, wait, hold it on. Adds one d six frost damage on your on top of your attack. Okay, so that's not including that. So let me do that plus one d six is six. So plus rage 18, damage. Eighteen total <laughs> damage. Oh, plus the two damage of rage damage. Yeah, so that's twenty damage total. Dang. Um, yeah, so he's just like, you can't even tell, like, that it, it's almost the same drills before. He's just, like, insanely pissed, and he's just, like, swiping away. Armos, being right next to Drell and seeing that he used a shard and he smashed it against his hand, you notice that the presence of the shard is somewhat taking control, and he is angry for this reason. Drell, you seem stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill him. Taking that damage. The demon is going to take a reaction and he is going to move five feet in another direction and try to get a better vantage point on Armos. Fuck, I didn't hit him. <laughs> when it moves, Armos, on your initiative, Reginald takes one of takes one of your free actions up as he's now face to face with the with the demon. And he starts speaking another language. But you understand, Reginald. You do not understand this other thing. Minus and Drell, earmuffs. Reginald, like, screams. And you haven't heard Reginald scream this loud before. As his presence starts to exuberate, as you feel this mighty aura uh, emanate from his body, Minus and Drell, you also feel this presence. Drell, not so much. You're blinded by rage. Minus can't hear us. <laughs> he goes... Stand down now! And then begins to curse him out in his own language. The demon before you stops in his tracks, backs up, notices him, nods, and then jumps through the wall, leaving the tavern. No! <laughs> what did I kill it? This demon. What did I kill him so bad? Launches through the tavern wall as if receiving an order from Reginald. Crashes out, drops down to city level, and begins to charge north. For the moment you're out of combat, we're gonna keep the same initiatives. As this thing is now running, you are starting to hear screams within the city. Drell, before they even start to talk, you chase him out the window. You chase him out the hole he just well, created. I was gonna do that anyways, but thanks for forcing me to do <laughs> stuff. I appreciate it, Dean. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I, yeah, no, I, I full on sprint after him. Like, I'm pissed, so. It is now Minus and Armos in this burning down building as Hugh and Baldi have officially gone. Wait, so Drell, Drell's outside with the... Uh... Dr oh, Drell chased the demon in blind rage because he is still under this effect of the shard. So... I let Menace know, like, Reginald told him to stand down, and he ran away. He went through there, and uh, Drill went after him. What? We gotta, we gotta chase after him. What? Uh, do I, do, as I turn back and look where the body is and where the portal are, is the portal still open? No. Is Jube's body still on the table? Yes. Okay. Uh, with everything going on, I, I look around... Uh, nobody's there. Nobody's taken Jube's body. The fire is starting to engulf the tavern. And I go, Armos, get out there. I'll be right behind. And I run up to Jube's to grab her body. Even though I'm small, I want to drag her body out so she doesn't get burned up. You, I'll let you go ahead and, and, and do that. So you go ahead and you grab Jube's body as you start to make your way out to the street. You come through the entrance as flames soon engulf the entire thief's forge and the tavern is now officially burning make it out at that final moment carrying jubes within the few moments that you got jubes and started to make your way out uh this thing has traveled a great distance crazy frightening speed 
you see blood dripping from like the windowsill with a large dent that this thing possibly jumped onto the building as somebody happened to be looking out their window at all the commotion and there was blood there down the street there's more blood dragging from its footprints and handprints as this thing has charged down the dark alleyway screams can be heard in the distance you know for a fact that this thing made it to the red spring district you hear the sounds of horns and bells chime throughout the city it looks like the town's guard and maybe the red guard have come across this beast within those few moments as the sound of heavy armored footsteps start making their way towards the commotion when you guys got to the thieves forge these guards were still looking for you they were still out and about it's still in the dead of night so you guys are out in the street you guys can pick it up from there i asked reginald what the fuck we were gonna kill that thing why did you tell it to run away as i'm still chasing drill you want to know what that thing that is a lesser version of me those are peons where i come from we have hordes and hordes of those they don't even have any wings look how much damage it did i think we had it under control i think you just saved your life i, I was i was hurting myself trying to give it a you know give it a chance but when i find this thing i'm gonna we're gonna kill it <laughs> Or Drell's gonna kill it. Drell is very mad at the moment. Drell, you just start charging straight to where the sounds are coming from. Minus Armos, is there anything you want to do? Are you chasing after it? I think Minus actually has a little moment on his own because he's kind of far behind. He kind of just makes it out with all the fire. Are any of the crew out there or is it just me and Jubes? Hugh, Baldy, and Leslie are like hiding in a corner looking at the carnage that just happened outside as this thing was hopping from rooftop to rooftop trying to kill anything in its path and they are horrified and they see you bring out Jubes and they run over to you. Yeah, so I drop Jubes down. Maybe there's just like a, a bench nearby or something, right? That mm -hmm. I kind of put her down on. And I think in this moment, Minis is actually just kind of in panic mode and shock and doesn't really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of yelling, you know, at Jubes, like, Jubes, Jubes, come on, we need you, Jubes. Come on, this isn't the time, Jubes. I, this is all a joke, right? This is a bad dream, right? And he starts casting a uh, second level aid around him and it gives five temporary hit points to everybody, but it's not doing anything to Jubes. And he just keeps trying to use everything in his power to bring Jubes back. Hugh, Baldy, and Leslie are speechless as you're shaking Jubes' body. And Baldy's like, come on. Why did you don't... <laughs> and he's cry he can't even get words out. He's trying to, like, pull you away. Although they have this mixed bags of emotions. But they even know that it's a hopeless cause. That you're trying to use magic to heal Jubes. And they pull you back. The aid, sp the aid spell does go off. Yeah, and he's, he's yelling at them as he's getting pulled. No, I can fix this. I can fix this. He was like, she's gone, but she's gone. Like trying to hold, hug you and like hold you back, but like also trying to console himself. Leslie is, for the first time, eyes closed as tears start to fall down, wetting her feathers. And you can see them just roll down her cheeks. And she's sitting on the floor and making this horrible owl cry. I think as he's getting pulled back eventually after some fighting, he just kind of goes limp. Hugh and Baldy catch you and set you down easy as you're coming to terms with the situation. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I couldn't save her, okay? Hugh and Baldy stay silent as Leslie cry. And Baldy goes, it's not your, it's not your fault, bud. Nobody knew this was going to happen. We all knew the risk. <laughs> Sniffs. Make sure she stays safe. I, uh, I need to help the guys, okay? He nods slowly and then quickly as he gets up and uh, slowly walks over to Jubes. And he's trying to hold back his tears and trying to be the brave one out of Leslie and Hugh and tries to gather them together and take care of Jubes. All right, Sid, come on. We, uh, we gotta go. He takes out his hand axes and starts running. Sid, like, gives you, like, a nod, but actually doesn't say anything in the moment. 
How far ahead is the monster from where we're at? Can we do we have eyes on it or is it still just uh, as you are running? You will get eyes on it soon as you're running towards screams. OK, you guys head north out of the knots and make it to the Red Spring District. There is a good amount of guards, maybe about eight to ten guards surrounding this demon as this demon is just hacking and slashing through commoners and other guards that are trying to stand up against it. You're like in the town square where like all the fancier stores are. So there's like a fountain there. There's all these broken, now broken stands. There's um, destruction everywhere. And there are dead bodies all over the streets. Oh, this is the square where my tree was. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Joel kind of misses his tree in the rage. No, <laughs> Moving forward, you now can take an additional action you could take on your turn. This thing is attacking everything blindly at the moment. If you wanted to take, except drill, <laughs> if you wanted to take a protect action, when this thing, when you're within melee range of this beast, you can have it attack you instead of commoners. And if you had an extra attack, let's say, you can take that extra attack and attack once. A little homebrew mechanic there for you. We're going to go ahead and kick it off with initiative 20. You guys come in on initiative 20, and this beast is just finishing up ripping somebody apart. It bit somebody off, just like Burnsfield, that just ate the top part uh, of a commoner that just happened to be like, walk, like, just wanted to see what was going on and rips him apart as he turns around, slashes at a guard, dropping him. One of the guards he just dropped is a Red Guards member. It's going to go down to initiative 16 minutes. I'm just trying to catch up at this point, so I think I, uh, I'm i going to dash to get as close as I can to this thing, take some cover behind like one of the stands, and uh, I'll launch some sling bullets at it. So uh, the first one is not great. The first one's a nine. Okay, that misses. Yeah, the second one is a modified 24. That hits. Eight damage plus three for my favorite foe plus six for my swarm. Hits him right in the back. Doesn't even turn with all the carnage and all the blood that's like around him. He's just focusing on what he's doing and just hacking and slashing away. Just assuming that something else just hit him as he's just focused on what he's uh, already doing. Mm -hmm. It's going to go to the beast's turn. The beast go turns around and goes to swipe at another guard. You see like this guard's face just come completely off as he slashes down. He takes a second action. You see all these dead bodies around him, kind of like circling him at this point, mix of like guards and like uh, people coming out to protect their stands. And he just like grabs the floor, lunges his head up, tosses his head back, opens his mouth, it dislocates, and he starts to inhale deeply. He goes, and the inhale has like this deep reverb uh, and echo. There are bluish, tealish streams of essence coming from the dead bodies around him, swarming and going inside of his mouth. It's going to move to Armos and Drell's turn. Drell. Okay, um, so since I can't reach him in my initial movement, um, I'm going to move up as close as I can um, and I'm going to just kind of stand like in between all the carts and stuff. And I'm going to throw a steel hand axe at him. 13 to hit. Misses as it just whizzes by. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All he says is fuck in that crazy rage. <laughs> <laughs> you mutter fuck and a barrel just like explodes somewhere in the distance of your blind rage. <laughs> Armos. Hey, it's me. <laughs> it's your initiative. I'm going to cast... Eldritch Blast from where I stand. I'm assuming I can see his big dumb self. He's what, nine feet tall? Isn't that yep. what you said? Oh, you can definitely see him. Dust off the old Eldritch Blast. And I got a 22 on the first one. Hits. Damage is 10, and it'll knock him 10 feet. I roll the next one, and it's a 16 to hit. 16 hits, and you go you double blast, you go pow, pow. Ba -ba. Okay, six damage on that one. Okay. 10 feet again and then I'm gonna move kind of in the center of the of the town little courtyard area and get get some cover behind one of the carts 
Okay. You take uh, the stands. So you run up and you take cover behind one of the stands as you double double tap him with your LG Blast, knocking him back 20 feet. Bing bong. Got him. <laughs> when you're attacking him, he was in the middle of this process of like, you know what he was doing. He was doing what you did with the blood shots. He was absorbing the life essence from these bodies as he was like mounted on all fours as all these streams of life essence coming from all these dead bodies and going into his mouth as you knock him back 20 feet and he snaps back and he looks in your direction but just sees a whole bunch of soldiers actually all he sees is me flicking him off from behind <laughs> my cover <laughs> we give him another one That's, gotta give him that emotional damage original <laughs> like, we do not take well to birds I'm telling you Hate them. That's why Elder Class uses charisma, right? <laughs> <laughs> On initiative 20, he regains his composure and there's nobody in his sight because you knocked him away from guards. So now that it's back to uh, initiative 20, guards are going to start shooting some arrows. So they're going to start adding some damage on this guy. Nice. Uh, these guards are not particularly strong and nowhere near as powerful as our mighty heroes. Obviously. <laughs> As arrows and so like you have some guards that run up and start slashing and blocking with the shields and you see some arrows uh, coming from the distance. This thing takes four points of damage from like just their combined efforts. Just trying to get whatever type of attacks uh, opportunities they can get. Also on initiative 20, you see coming in from the right side of town is somebody in heavy armor very prestigious stature and is walking in wielding a giant two-handed blade uh coming in from the northeast side of town is it an orc no it is is it a, a paladin it is a paladin a very specific oh. paladin known as treus buge whoa from the western side you see from the very fancy fancy of the chalice inn a mighty hero steps out from the tavern doors as they swing behind him in mighty gold, gold armor. For it is Golo the Mighty oh. ready to take action as he takes his heavy hammer of a weapon and slings it over his shoulder. He goes, ha, 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 have it over here, town of what's it over in Dilmore. <laughs> For this beast shall be vanquished from the might of Golo. And he starts to charge in. As he charges in and knock his helmet off. Yeah, mage hand him to trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see that he runs out over here and he runs up and is able to make it to him on his turn with a dash action as Golo is now stands right in front of the beast and he's about to charge up his weapon. You see him swing and he manages to get like a hit off on him, but he doesn't look very effective. He goes, have another as he goes to get ready to swing. Treyus Buge is now giving commands and it looks like his blade is starting to shine with radiance and holiness illuminating the darkness of the alleys, alleyways and uh, around him bringing a little more light to this dark combat it's going to go down to initiative 16 which is a menace I run up to the nearest stand getting about looks like 35 feet between me and the monster and can I uh can I throw a sling bullet at Golo and pretend like I was trying to hit the demon? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Good to re-roll that. Um, I got, <laughs> got a 21 and a 25 to hit him twice. <laughs> they both hit. Great. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> 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 uh oh, D4 is D4 is D4 is. <laughs> Sid is laughing. Like, <laughs> uh, so that's uh, 14 points of damage. But then, can I use my swarm to hit the demon <laughs> so it looks like I was trying to hit the I'll demon? I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And that's uh, two points of damage on the demon. But because I wasn't actually trying to hit the demon, my favorite foe does not apply. <laughs> Worth it. As Golo is swinging this heavy mallet around, he goes, oh, oh, he has this like really bad gash in the back of his head as you hit him with 14 points of damage. As you like shatter his gold plated helmet, he goes, oh, 
<laughs> Who did that? Who dares attack Golo the Mighty? Friendly? My bad, I was trying to hit the demon. Friendly? I was trying to hit the demon, I'm sorry. Friendly? Demon goes, friendly? What the hell, man? <laughs> <laughs> the demon unbiasedly attacks whatever's in front of him, which is Golo swinging his heavy mallet. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> comes down with a slash, similar to before, crushes his head downwards as he staggers forward, <laughs> and then with his other hand, stabs him through his chest, raising him up in front of everybody as his body begins to rip and tear from the massive paw that just went through his stomach. The massive paw that just went through his tummy and slashes him down as Golo's limpless, lifeless body rolls oh. onto the floor, eventually splitting into two pieces. Oh my gosh. Would he have killed Golo regardless of my damage? You'll never know. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional damage. <laughs> Emotional <laughs> damage. <laughs> um, it didn't help. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Minutes doesn't know. It's going to move to almost in Drell's turn. Drell? All right. Well, now that I'm finally within attacking distance. <laughs> Alec has been moving his token around anxiously <laughs> to attack. Yeah, <laughs> he's just all fired up. So I'm gonna move up and I'm gonna yell or not, not yell, but I'm gonna whisper again to the to my axe, uh, marmalade, <laughs> and then I am going to just run up and slice and dice. I think it needs to have a little bit more oomph than that. Come yeah, on. come on, give yeah. it your you, 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 your word, your command word. You're you're mad. You're really peeved. Dude, I'm done just... it like eight times, and the monster keeps running away from me. I can't keep doing the same shit. Bro, <laughs> somebody's over. stepping on your tots, bro. Same marmalade with some gusto. Vigor. <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen? Is, um, <laughs> gonna... <laughs> Are you... Okay. You know what that's called? That's called fogging. That's what they do in the opera. They start off real low, so that when they get real high with the music, yeah, you just feel like you're whatever. Yeah. That's what you're trying to fucking, do to us right now. Who the fuck knows that, dude? That's what you're trying to do to us right now. <laughs> this distinguished tiefling does. <laughs> yeah, apparently. That's like probably the most educated thing I ever heard you say, Jared. Damn. Yeah. I was going to say, that's <laughs> pretty knowledgeable. Um, and that's an 11 to hit. What? You have to say your command word. You got people listening, man. Give me some oomph, man. But I want it to be like a whisper thing. Why are you trying to make it like where it's more than that? Why why can't I play my character the way I want to play it? <gasps> toxic DM. Why? Yeah, dude, toxic DM. Okay, fine. I scream at the top of my lungs <laughs> like Braveheart, kind of like at the last second, marmalade. <laughs> and I just r run in and swing at him. And since you made it to do it again, I'm going to roll again. So that is... I'm being effectively gaslit. <laughs> I am a victim. I am a victim. I am the victim. <laughs> uh, that is a 25 to hit. Does that hit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty fair, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really, but you didn't say no while I was doing it, so I just kind of went with it. Okay. okay, so that's um 11 plus another D6. Dude, that's the second time I've rolled that D6, and I've got sixes on both of them. Hell yeah. So that's 17 plus two extra damage. My rage damage, so that's 19 damage. You deliver this devastating attack as you just slash your frost axe right across his face and you are just you almost knock him prone with the amount of anger and strength behind that attack as it just goes and snaps back and appears to be looking at you do you want to do anything else on your turn no, I, I don't have anything no all right uh are you satisfied with your turn you're not going to leave me a negative review on roll 20 <laughs> um, I need that five star review, Daddy. Please. It might be on Yelp, but not on Rule Twenty. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay. I'm sending it right to the Better Business Bureau. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Not the BBB. Not the BBB. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> Next up, we go to. Next, we go back to Initiative Twenty. Wait, what? Armor. Oh, we yeah. move over to our turn. Like, I know turn. I'm hiding pretty well, <laughs> but I didn't roll stealth. Okay. 
to, I'm just kind of going cover to cover, trying to get closer to the monster, but uh, because I'm so far away, so I'm gonna hit him with the Eldritch Blast first. First roll is a 10, which I know misses, so I'm just gonna move on, and that is an 18. Ooh. I know that hits, and that is a four in damage. Boop. <laughs> Got him. And then <laughs> him. this thing just gets hit with the bolt on, on his shoulder and he stumbles back a few feet and just like has it broke his uh, concentration against Drell. Moving back to initiative 20, Treyish Bugs enters the fray, looks around, seeing the dead bodies, and with his stoic face, doesn't show any sad motion, but rather feels fueled with righteousness shines his blade and he sticks it up into the air and he screams may Paylor bless our allies and rid our foes of any injustice they may give upon this beautiful town of Dillamar the dead shall have their vengeance as a bright light shines over the marketplace for a brief moment it feels like as if it's day everyone gains 1d10 of damage and to hit on their next roll as they are now wow. buffed by this righteous light. I'll take it. Yeah, I thought I really didn't like that guy, but he's not bad. Yeah, I hated what he was saying, but all of a sudden I feel so great. <laughs> yeah, I really hope he doesn't realize we're the people that stole all these blood shards and possibly <laughs> caused all this. But... <laughs> So glad we robbed that guy. <laughs> Drell also realizes he's not near Armos and Minas and he was possibly yelling all of this to them. <laughs> <laughs> or he was talking in his head. He thought that the scry stones were working, but they <laughs> were <Yeah>. dead. <laughs> um, Reginald he goes, this guy's about to pop. What do you mean pop? What do you mean pop? Minas, go. Uh, <laughs> I want to kill him. Does, is there anyone that needs help that's like injured and I could help? Ah, uh, everybody needs help. Anything around them needs help. There are a lot of dead people, but you do also see some injured people as well. Where's the closest injured person? Fucking me. Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> With like 10 feet of you, you could see uh, there's like a guard that has like its leg ripped off, but it's like bleeding. He's trying to like hold it in. You see somebody else like holding their stomach as they're bleeding. You see somebody like looking for like their arm. It's real saving Private Ryan shit. Uh, and it's carnage all around. You could just kind of pick somebody uh, out of a hat. Minus begrudgingly runs over to the red guard, slings a bullet <laughs> over at uh, the demon. I thought you were gonna say at the red guard while he's down, be like, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> right Get where his fucked. limb got ripped off. Like, <laughs> fuck. I'm here for you, buddy. Mercy Don't kill. worry. No, it's a flesh wound. Mercy. 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 <laughs> I'd have and a line of change. Is... <laughs> That's a 14 to hit. That misses. <gasps> what? Oh, shit. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh, thank goodness. I have a plus eight. That makes it a uh, 15 to hit. That hits. Thank goodness. <laughs> so I'm going to roll uh, I'm gonna roll my sling damage plus the D10. So that is nine plus one from the D10. <laughs> when you shoot this sling bullet, no, this doesn't actually happen, but you feel a moment within you that this bullet lands and really impacts almost like a like a thum goes off in your mind when you when the bullet makes contact to his body as he as the demon gets hit with this bullet he takes an additional step back and he grunts as you feel mm. confidently that you just did some serious damage to him and he's really hurt and then and then takes 8 points of damage uh combined from my favorite foe in my swarm and then I was going to use my uh, second attack to help this red guard. You go ahead and you, after launching this powerful sling bullet with your magical swarm, you go over and you protect the uh, red guard member and you start to uh, try to pack his wound and get administer first aid. Yeah, I like to think I pull him over behind the nearest cart. 
Moving to the demon's turn, the demon stumbles back and then sees Drell with his blind rage, and he's focused on him as he got slapped in the face for 20 damage, and he's going to make two attacks on him. He's going to bite Drell with a 15. That misses. Bite and snaps and misses as the gust from the powerful maw uh, blows his beard back and you know straightens it out a little bit. It was a little messy. And then he goes to slash with a 13. As that misses. Drell in his blind rage just like bobs and weaves as this thing cannot land a hit on him. It's gonna move gonna to fucking kill you. It's gonna move to <laughs> Drell in almost his turn. Oh my god. I see Drell going in for the final blow. And uh, I want to get a piece of that action, so I go in to try to attack with him at the exact same time to hit it from both sides. So um, I sprint up uh, to the monster, and I hit him with my tentacle rod. So we get plus 10 to hit and plus 10 to damage, and it attacks three yeah. times. Yep. And if I hit with all three, <laughs> then it has to make a yep. DC constitution. It's, constitution it's dead. Save. It, it's dead. I know, I know. I got I've rolled my damage. I'm pretty sure it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so you just you just roll your damage. <laughs> it won't need to make a save if you do a decent amount of damage. I'm pretty Each sure. Each tentacle makes a melee attack roll with plus nine. So already it's a 19 that, that plus. That hits, bro. That's a hit. That, okay, so you hit him three times. Did not think that through. Um, <laughs> Minus, you shot that bullet right out of your sling, and you were confident that when this bullet connected, it changed the very tide of battle as a thume goes off in your mind as this thing takes a step back as you dome it right in its smooth brain head as it stumbles back it tries to retaliate by attacking the closest thing to him which is drell with a missed slash and a missed bite the pressure from the attacks blow wind in all directions blowing everyone's robes and beards and uh away from it in a cool epic fashion countering that attack Armos goes in with the tentacle rod and attacks with all three landing. All these gushy octopi tentacles on him, restraining the demon in place as Drell slams down the axe onto his head and keeps beating him and beating him and beating it until the demon splits open and is now dead. On top of that final thrust that Drell slams his axe down on, a shock wave of this red energy blows everybody back 10 feet. The ground becomes corrupted where the demon stood, and the demon molds over into this red ore. The guards get up and regain their composure. You guys shake your head and regain your composure. Reginald goes, oh, I haven't witnessed that in a very long time. Treus gets up. You're officially out of combat as this demon is slain. And rather than a corpse of a large red demon is a red ore vein sticking out of the ground. The red ore vein looks like a like an iron deposit that you would find in a cave. But rather iron sticking out. It is rock and looks like raw blood shard. Like blood shard in its raw element. And that is where we'll end this week's session. Damn, dude. <gasps> I fuck. I didn't I was so worried we were not gonna make it out of there alive. Dude, we are completely out of everything. We're you know, completely well, out of We everything. don't know how much longer we're gonna be in this mess. So I don't know if I want to <laughs> say it yet, but let's just say it's very if I would have got attacked there, I might have died. <laughs> oh man. It missed twice, too. Yeah, yeah It did miss twice. Uh, it actually rolled really low. This thing has pretty nasty stats, and I'll be happy to share them. Well, it would have hit me if I didn't put on the uh, chain mail for, in the other room. There you go. It would have hit me, I think, <laughs> twice. So, <laughs> Welcome out to a non-copyrighted version of Highway to Hell, Jonas. Have fun with that, a little bard friend. Yeah, Jonas, uh, I did that just for you. <laughs> Do it again. I need a Highway to Hell as famously... Do uh, like the sh <laughs> they got to do like the shitty flute. <laughs> I need a loot version of Highway to Hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's pretty obvious what it was, but we'll talk about it in the after show, uh -huh. boys. Uh-huh. Woo. 
Ooh. What a so, a, dude. That was an yeah. action packed one. I liked it. Pretty bloody. You guys saved more people than I thought you would, too. But uh, that's what we do, baby. Oh, yeah. You changed the course of Dillmore for sure, bro. I wonder how you're going to talk your way out of this next situation. But we'll talk about it more on the after show. Talk your way out of what? What do you mean? <laughs> Jokes on you. I was going to do a dash, disengage dash action <laughs> as soon as the monster was killed. <laughs> We do good, guys. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. See you later. Have fun taking care of your hurt people. Oh, man. When this episode airs, uh, I will put abstract art I have of this demon. Uh, hopefully, I have some commissioned art because this is going to be uh, a staple. A staple, probably, mm, but it is definitely noted. one of mentioning. It is a homebrew monster. It is a main villain, let's say, potentially. And. Different forms of it may come out in the future. A little foreshadowing there, but I'll post the abstract art I have of it um, that the AI generated for me to use for today's session uh, when the time comes. But before we get into the after show, gentlemen, is there anything you want to say? I love Fireball. Yeah, you know, uh, well, number one, uh, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter. Um, you guys know the vibes. It super helpful just um you know having you guys support our socials um uh, because the more stuff that you know people are able to help us out on that the more stuff the cool stuff we are you know able to do so um yeah it's a D D P O D 404 on twitter so hell yeah man you gotta find us on the and tweet the, uh, oh the second thing i want to say i gotta grind my gears uh segment with chipotle um they fucking they're always skimping me on the amount of rice and <laughs> the amount of meat i get so really? it's kind of a i got that's my beef my my beef of the week is with Chol chipotle you should come to my chipotle i always get too much rice you can have mine really yeah it's like overwhelming bro if you guys aren't eating bubble cues for your burrito bowls you're missing no. out but what bubble cues yeah i I don't know what that is. How uh, are you talking about? Might be a Jersey thing. I don't know. I might have Bubba misspoke. <laughs> I that, live on the West Coast, bro. You, you know, know how like there's Moe's and Chipotle? There's a place called Bubba Coos, and Oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> that's a Jersey thing. Yeah, it might, definitely is. Um, but they're pretty good. They make some. They they, they make their bowls pretty Bubba precise. Coos Bubba Coos burritos. Coos. Dude, there are literally 20 Bubba Coos in the whole world. <laughs> is there really? Yes. Wow, I've been blessed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even Yo, know Mo's, that. Was amazing. Moe's is like super underrated, though. I, I, I feel like Mo's, it's man. better than Chipotle, to be oh, honest. 100% their, is. their queso. Their queso is Mo's the reason is Chipotle better. has queso, because Moe's queso is mm. fire. And no, their atmosphere, man. And the Joey bag of so donuts, bro. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's a burrito and a bag of chips, bro. Yeah. At a discounted oh. price on Tuesdays, man. Let's be real. You all come here for the food content, not even the bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let me I, tell you about a great show called Info Stat. No, <laughs> 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 uh, um, a little inside joke from <laughs> me and Dan there. Yeah, we'll talk about more on, uh, food on the yeah, after more show. Yeah, more food stuff on sure, the after show. I, I've got a few points I got to hit, but I know we're trying to wrap this up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I found out my cousin has a D and D podcast. Oh, by the way. Oh, fun fact. Uh, called No Dice Pocket Podcast Network. No Dice. Uh, my cousin no Brittany, dice. as she goes by Britty, <laughs> and he's leaving us for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go join that podcast because I'm tired of this one. So uh, you know, gotta keep it in the family. <laughs> but I just wanted to shout that out because that was cool. I uh, I started listening to the first episode, and I'm gonna continue on soon, and then talk to pretty bad and maybe we can get her on here as a maybe a guest star who knows mm, that'd be pretty oh, cool wait, guests cool. question mark mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. we will see maybe <laughs> and also uh if you want good pizza new haven has the best pizza in the world so i'm just gonna end on that oh you, all right jared listen, your turn no, you jared, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> i was just gonna say i like fireball even if it blows up on me it's pretty great <laughs> so i gotta shout out Shout out to Fireball. It's so funny. Shout, Fireball, you the real MVP. Well, <laughs> he means Fireball and the Discord, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, I'll do it. All right. All right. See you guys and in the after show. Thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for chilling. Talk to you on the socials. 
And uh, we'll catch you next week for the next episode. Now we're going to move on to Humbre is Heroes. Take it away, future me. <laughs> I think you mean future Dan. <laughs> It's time to thank the supporters of our show, starting with Sigic College alumni Ulrich Shield Dust. Many of you may not know this, but when Ulrich isn't working at the forge or playing cards with Leslie, he likes to volunteer his time teaching children at the local orphanage how to smith. His good friend Chet works there, and he can't wait to catch up with him on his next visit. Next are Humbrea's heroes. Pascal Elliott, aka Charcoal Darts, is a wild magic painter and character artist for D&D 404. She took on a new student recently. As crazy as it sounds, a giant snake approached her with a newfound passion for illustrations. Unfortunately, she had to ask the snake to leave after mistaking several mouse paintings for the real thing. Next is Man with Glass, famous glass blower gone rogue. Many alchemists have found their laboratory equipment replaced with comically small versions of themselves. Everyone suspects Man with Glass and are getting the pitchforks ready as we speak. Run Man with Glass while you can! Now Artemis, a great fighter and bouncer of the Kambuki fighting pits. Artemis is used to getting rough, but nothing could prepare them for their recent predicament. A man by the name of Jake from Land Garden bored Artemis nearly to death with what could only be false tales of a Goliath tiny minotaur and a tiefling dropping him into a magical well after roughing up some jackal wares. Have you heard of Joshua Weaver, famous bag weaver of Humbrea? I heard Josh wove a bag so huge and so beautiful that Lord Baron himself requested an audience to congratulate him. That or he was imprisoned for using up all the wool north of the border to make that bag. I can't remember. On to Alex Judge Dredd. They are a legendary wizard with an appetite for justice and a bit of a temper. When questioned about their recent vigilante excursion, Alex told the guard, That horse rider was going eight miles per hour in the carriage pool lane. They deserved no less than the cone of cold I gave them. Ooh, yikes. Anyways, thank you again for all the love and support from our patrons. If you would like to hear your name here, uh, you can subscribe to us on patreon.com slash dnd404. Tier 3 and up will be featured in this segment every month. But have a good week, and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye!